How's it going YouTube? My name is Sebastian and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to turn an Excel spreadsheet like this into something like this using Photoshop. So one of the things that I struggled with a long time ago when I was first doing game design was how to improve my workflow speeds. Uh, a long time ago, I was doing every single image and every mock-up in Photoshop one at a time. And when I wanted to print 20 or 30 or 40 unique different cards for the game that I'm designing, uh, it was a really, really time-intensive process. So I thought, there's got to be a better way to do this. I did a ton of research, uh, and after a while, uh, I found some really cool tips and tricks that uh, I'm going to share with you guys today that are going to help you speed up that workflow uh, and get your work done so you can move on to the fun stuff faster. So what I'm looking at right here is a complete document and I'm not going to work backwards. I'm actually going to start a brand new one for you, but I just want you to look at what the end product is. So in this case, I've got uh, a Photoshop file open and it has a whole bunch of different text layers. And all these text layers are linked to uh, an Excel document here. So if you look at this, um, you'll maybe be able to see that the headers all correspond to the layer name. So for example, um, I've got durability here that's linked to durability. Um, I've got the keyword here that's linked to keywords. Um, on my on my document keyword three here so all of these headings are are matched up and I've got text uh, in each of these fields and I also have blank spaces so you'll notice here that I've got commas and this was one of the things that took me a really long time to figure out how to do uh, in if you try and import um, an, a data set from Excel into Photoshop and any of the cells under one of the column headings is blank for example like this you'll get an import error and it will not register the data set import and it will not let you import anything in it. Uh, it took me forever when I say it was like a full week of looking on and off to figure out how to deal with this, but my data sets have blanks. So there are sometimes keywords that I use on my cards that um, that are just they're not there. They're not populated because not every card has a keyword. So to, to solve that problem, you have to enter uh, quotes and then hit space and this seems really strange but normally you don't want any spaces after your characters because this document when it is saved is saved as a tab delimited text document however in this case of the commas you want it you want to tell it that it's not a comma character it's actually denoting a space and you do that by entering the comma hitting space and then hitting enter so if you forget to do that for any of these guys, it still will fail. So uh, the reason I'm actually sharing with this now is because it's going to help uh, with any troubleshooting you may need to go through later. So I'm going to go ahead and close down Excel. Um, and I'm going to close down, or actually I'll leave this open for now, but we're going to create a new one and we're going we're gonna to go through this uh, entirely from scratch. And I'm just going to show you the easiest way to do it. So we're going to set up our file here. I'm just making a, a trading card for now, which is a, a typical, uh, let's do 2.5 by 3.5 with a standard DPI of 300. So that's for printing. Uh, if you're printing at home and you don't really care about the resolution, you could set it to 150, but we're going to keep it at 300 for this demo. So now we've got a, a blank canvas here. Uh, and I wanted to sort of include some tips and tricks uh, for how to make demo cards and, and character sheets and things like that uh, in Photoshop. But I realized that this video is going to be fairly long um, without that stuff. So I'll have to make uh, two videos doing this. So after we're done talking about data merges, which is going to be in this video, I'm also going to be talking uh, about actions uh, and a few other things. We're going to be doing batch jobs as well. So you can, you can basically automate a whole ton of things like for example if you have 200 photos that are PNGs and you want to open them all up and save them as JPEGs of a different size you can do that with uh, with a batch job and I'm going to show you how to do all that really fun stuff. So to start um, what we're going to do is we're just going to pop over to the Excel document that I've already created and prepared. So step one when you do this you're going to want to have um, everything uh, in, in a a folder that you can easily access. So you may not want to um, 
do or follow along uh, this video with your own stuff. And you may just want to try and copy my example just so you get familiar with it because if you screw up anything, even one tiny little decimal point in this whole procedure, it, it won't work. So um, precision is, is paramount. So what I've done here is I've created a document. Uh, it's really, really short and really, really simple. So I've got, uh, I've got five columns here. I've got a dog breed and I've got four dog breeds and I've got a name for each of these dogs and I've given them each uh, a skill. Now, of course, I wanted to add some blanks in just because if that's applicable to you and you're going to be having blanks in your in your import, you're going to want to learn how to do this. So we added two here. Uh, and then I created um, some images of those dogs. So in the same folder, um, I created a subfolder called dogs unsized. Uh, and I've got four pictures of the dogs. Now these are all relatively the same dimension. I wanted them to be uh, very similar because I don't want to have to resize them. Uh, that's a little bit more advanced doing batch resizes and things and, and requires a little bit more hands-on. So um, I just got these off Google. They're not all the same size, but they're relatively the same form factor. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to Photoshop and we're going to build this based on our Excel spreadsheet. So let's get this minimized and we'll get uh, Photoshop up here. Yeah, try and play this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so step one. Uh, what we want to do is we want to create uh, the space for our card. What's our card going to look like? So in this case, we're just going to have a normal card. And if you if you're not familiar with Photoshop um, and how to how to do all this stuff, I'm just going to just give you some quick tips while we're going along here. So what I did is I went to the uh, rectangle tool and I just dragged and dropped in a new rectangle. And now I'm gonna select that layer, I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna rasterize it. And this is gonna allow it to be editable, meaning that I can manipulate its size. I'm gonna hold Control T on a PC uh, and I'm going to head up here to the top column and I'm going to right click on width and I'm gonna change that to inches and height, I'm gonna do the same. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller on either side here so we have a nice little margin between where the edge of the card is and where our images are going to go. Next I'm going to create a little nameplate. This is where the name of the dog is going to go. And I'm just going to name this name. I'm going to rasterize it and I'm going to, while I'm keeping my cursor on that layer, I'm going to paint it a different color just so that we've got a nice little background for our name. Perfect. And next, we're going to create another rectangle, and this is where our image is going to be fit when we automate this whole thing. So this is going to be our image layer. I'm going to call that image. And you'll notice that the names that I'm providing for these layers correspond directly to the column headings in my Excel document, and this is purposeful. Uh, next, uh, we should maybe add a little skill bar for these guys and of course we can clean that up in a sec so this is going to be uh this is just going to be you know what let's go with skills so although we're not changing um the image layers with with the text layers it's important that uh that we follow a naming convention so we know what everything is for and where everything is gonna go. So let's call these uh, skills, yeah, and then rasterize. Okay, and now let's start doing our text boxes. So this is super important. So we know our name goes here because we already called this layer name. Uh, and we're gonna call this guy name. And we're gonna go, uh oh, I think we should have typed in it first. I'm gonna redo that. Text in Photoshop is always a little finicky. Okay, so we're gonna go, this is the name. And I believe just, what happened? Uh-oh, I'm gonna do that again because the text is the same color. Name of dog. Uh, let's just change that to something that's a little bit better in terms of size. So I'm gonna open up the character panel and I'm gonna switch that to eight millimeters. Maybe it'll fit now. Perfect. Okay, so 
before we go on, um, I'm just going to call that name. I'm just going to show you uh, a few other little quick tips that super that are super helpful when you're trying to improve the fidelity of text in Photoshop because a lot of time it's best to use something like InDesign when you're preparing uh, text for print. Um, but you can you can achieve really really good results in Photoshop without having to to use InDesign. Uh, because that would require you know to set up a different data merge through InDesign and it, and it just it kind of slows your your whole process down. So uh, these are the tips that I've discovered work extremely well for making sure that your text is really clear. So the first thing is as often as you can, you're going to want to have black text. Uh, and the best way to ensure you've got the blackest text is to go to blending options and to hit multiply. So when your text is selected, uh, you're going to want to go all the way to the bottom right and you're going to want to make your text as black as possible. So a lot of times people will go uh, 0, 0, 0. And you'll notice that I've set in my CMYK settings here, um, I've set black to 100% and yellow, magenta, and cyan to 0. But that doesn't look very black, does it? And what I found that is that if you actually go uh, 40 on magenta, 40 on cyan, you get like a really dark, dark black, uh, which is pretty darn good. But if you set your uh, blending options to multiply, it's going to make that super, super dark. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on uh, anti-aliasing. So if you're not familiar with, with uh, aliasing very quickly, uh, because this is a, a raster program, meaning that everything is made up of pixels, if I zoom into the text, you'll see uh, all around the border there is there are these little shaders, basically. So for example, where my cursor here is, you can follow this line. It's kind of blending the black as it fades away. We want to make that as crisp as possible because although it doesn't look too bad when you're zoomed out, in print um, you may notice a little bit of blurriness on the edges, uh, and that's that's not something that happens when you're using InDesign because it's it's vector-based text, uh, so it's extremely precise. I don't know exactly what the DPI is, but it's many thousands. So if you if you want to clear this up in photoshop so your text is really crisp you're going to want it to to use sharp i use sharp and i think it's it's definitely the best i use sharp um in text up until about uh 12 millimeter text and after that it actually becomes better if you switch to strong so for now we're just oops for now we're just going to leave it um at sharp and if you're not really sure how to get here, you want to be you want to be in the text uh, text menu option, and you want to select your text, and then you want to head up and go sharp. Now, if you don't, if you have a whole bunch of text, you can just select the layer, uh, and then then you can head up and do it, and it will transform the entire layer of text, and not just what you have under your selection. So, with that being said, let's move on to the to the next text labels. Uh, so we've got. So we've got the image here, that's done. Uh, we've got skills, and so that means we need to add skills one and two. So I'm just gonna hold Alt. I'm gonna click on the layer, and I'm going to drag it down and let go, drag it down and let go, and this is gonna give me a copy. So we're gonna go and we're gonna set up skill one, and we're just gonna go in and label that skill one. Uh, we're gonna move this guy, shrink him down a bit, there we go, fit them in nicely. Um, and if you go into paragraph options up here, you can actually left justify it, which is what we'll do here. Stick that in there. Uh, and we're gonna call that skill one. Uh, next, we're gonna rename this layer. We're gonna call it skill two. And we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna move it down and resize it. And this time, we're just gonna right justify it so that it fits in nicely. So select all, uh, skill two. Shrink that box down a bit. Good. Good. Select that text, right justify, and we should be good to go here. Okay, and there should be another text box, and I do believe it's description, so, you know, we don't need another uh, backer for that. Um, I'll just change the color of this guy here, so the skills have a nice, uh, whoops. Skills have a nice little background border to them. Okay, 
Now let's head back to our Excel sheet. And what are we missing here? Name. Uh, the breed, right. So the breed goes down here. And we'll just say this is the breed. And we want the text to be here. And if, if this ever happens when you're manipulating text, there's a really, really easy fix. So you'll notice how um, instead of it jumping and the second line spacing properly, it kind of got jumbled up here. So to fix that is really simple. So you just make sure you have your cursor on the layer in your canvas or on the layer here uh, in the layers tab. And if, if your layers tab ever uh, disappears for whatever reason, you can just hit F7 or you can go to window and open it back up. So the way to fix this is you go to your text tool um, and you open, sorry, characters not text, but characters. And you're gonna to wanna to change the, the vertical spacing to match the text and hit enter, and that will free up the issue for you. So in our case, um, we can just uh, left justify this to fix the issue, and then we should be able to squeeze breed in there. There we go, that looks pretty good to me. And maybe we'll just fit it into the bottom here. Perfect. So now we've got um, a pretty not bad looking card. And we're gonna add some art to this uh, to spice it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna save this file. And I've got this on my desktop right now. So we're gonna head into YouTube tutorials and we're gonna call this the dog master. Sounds good. All right, so we're just gonna verify before we do anything else that everything that we've copied over uh, is working correctly. So I'm just gonna close the layers tab for now, pull up that Excel, Excel spreadsheet and just make sure that we've done everything we need to do. So have I got the breed? Yeah, the breed's down here. Um, actually, I should have the layers tab open just to double check the heading. Okay. Here we go. So the breed, uh, nope, see, I should call this breed, perfect. So the breed is there, uh, we've got the name, skill one, skill two, and the image. Perfect, okay, now we're ready for the real magic. So now that we've got this guy saved, uh, we can go ahead and close down our document. And actually, before I do, I'm just gonna show you what I did with the images. So really quickly, I probably should have showed you that when I was in the unsized folder. So I just downloaded these images from Google, they're stock images. Um, if you if you right click on the image and head to properties, you can see the location and you can copy the location. So if you control C, head back into your uh, document and I just had the bulldog here. So when you actually paste this originally, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna head uh, forward, forward dash like this. Um, and you're going to have to add the name of the file. So in this case, it was Bulldog. And then as an extension, the type of image that it was. So I double checked that these are all JPEGs, but if it was a PNG, for example, you'd have to type PNG like this. It's better just for formatting purposes to have them all uh, the same file type. So now that you've done that, um, let's close down our Excel document. And let's head back into Photoshop and let's start importing these guys. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to image, variables and define. And what you're basically doing is you're telling Photoshop that we wanna start building um, the components of this piece uh, from uh, a document, an Excel document, a text or tab delimited document. So it's gonna start asking us what each of these what to do with each of the layers in our tab in our layer tab right now so let's start at the top it's always a good place to start so name so what it's asking us here to do is it's saying choose the layer that you want to describe so i'm choosing the name layer right now at the top here and it and then it asks well, what do you want to do with it and i say well i want to replace it with the text in my excel document and it's asking you what the name of the column heading in your text document um, that corresponds to this layer name is. So in this case, they're exactly the same. And this is why I told you earlier, it's very important to ensure 
that the naming conventions are followed completely. So after we've done this, you don't hit enter or anything, you go up to this little next button and you repeat it and you'll see it starts going one by one down the list. So let's go skill one. What's skill one called in our document? It's the same. So you're gonna fill all these guys out. Uh, name, I have name twice. Ah, okay, yeah. So what it's done here is it's it's come across the image and it's saying, what do you want to do with the image? Uh, and I'm just I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to tell it to ignore it. So we're just going to ignore it, and I'm not going to define it. And that's that's what you do for those. So the breed is is a text field again, and exactly the same as before. It has the same name. Skills. Uh, the skills is the skill bar, which we don't want to define, and I think the rest of it is the image. Okay, so this is image, and we're going to do uh, fill. So you can you can kind of play around with these. Uh, you can see which description uh, is best. So it resizes the image if, to fit the box, or it just fills it as best it can. I prefer using fill in these because they're slightly different. Uh, and then we're going to go OK, and the box will disappear, and you're probably going, oh, what happened? But if you go back, now you'll see that this, this data set that was grayed out before is actually uh, activated now. So you can left click it and, you, and then it's gonna pull up this little screen and it's gonna say, well, now you're ready, you've defined your variables, let's import your data set. So you're gonna wanna hit import. You're gonna wanna go select file. And in this case, we're gonna just gonna head to desktop, desktop go to tutorials and, and get this file now. Um, when you save the file, you're going to want to save as, if you're in Excel, and you're going to want to save it as this, a text file, and it's tab delimited. So actually, before we go any further, I'm just going to show you how to find that option so it's really simple. So um, if you head up here, save as, um, and go here, you'll, you'll see the options for saving. Um, and you're going to scroll down until you find text tabbed eliminated and that's the file type that you're going to use and that's the only file type at least as far as I know um, that that that's formatted correctly for for this import method so grab that load and hopefully when I click OK everything goes well excellent so you're gonna to want to hit apply perfect so now it's imported everything from our, uh, whoop, looks like it cut off chomp, unless I didn't spell chomp correctly, so we can make this box a little bigger. Perfect. Okay. So it's gone through our Excel sheet and it's grabbed the name, it's grabbed the image, it's grabbed both skills, and it's grabbed the breed, which is exactly what we want. Now, if you want to check each one individually, you can actually go up to, let's see if I can find it here. Da -da 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 -da. Bear with me. Uh, where is it? Ah, sorry, <laughs> I'm blind. Under image, if you go to um, apply data set, it can you can actually like left click and it will it will run through the list of of all items in your data set and you can see how they'll look before you export them. Great, so that's step one. Next, um, we're going to export these guys. Uh, and the way you do that is you go to export uh, data sets as files, and then you select where you want them to go. So in this case, we're gonna go to our YouTube tutorials, uh, and let's just quickly create a new folder uh, in our YouTube tutorials uh, and call this uh, dogs, and we're gonna export it to dogs. And you're going to want to, you can, you can decide whether you want to do it one at a time or if you want to uh, do all of them. So in our case, we're just going to do them all at once. Great. So I'm just going to shut this down um, and let's, let's save that. That's our master document. Let's save that. Uh, and I'm going to go into dogs and we're going to, we're going to have four um, PSD files. So these are Photoshop files, right? And now now is where the really cool stuff comes in. So we've got these all set up um, and you're probably wondering, well, that's pretty useless to me because how am I gonna go into each one of those and print those? And the answer is you're gonna use um, something called an action. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. 
So you're going to want to go into one of your uh, files here. Let's just see this guy. And before I go any further, um, let's have a place where we can save this guy. So I'm going to create a new folder called dogs underscore PNG because I want I want to turn all these guys into to PNGs. So when you're in here, you're going to want to head over to the Actions tab. And if you don't see that, you can head up to Window and you can open Actions with Alt F9. Or you can open the Layers tab and it's the second, uh, the second tab there. Now you'll see I have a whole whack ton of actions that I'm using right now. Uh, and these are for the, the game that I've, that I've currently designed, Runeslingers. And these have, these have saved me more than you can possibly imagine. I mean, uh, it, before I knew how to do this, I was wasting days. And I mean full days because I was, you know, creating 200 cards. And when I make a change to a template, it was just awful trying to fix it. So if you want to create a new... Um, action uh, actually before i tell you how to do that I, I should tell you what an action is so an action is basically a macro and a macro is a series of steps and clicks uh, that are recorded and saved that you can loop through and repeat automatically so you don't have to redo it so for example if i wanted to open a file and i wanted to change the dimensions of that file and then save it as a different file type you would use an action to do that so you do it once record the action and then replay, replay the action um, as a batch job. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we head to the bottom right here, uh, this little icon, this innocuous little icon, looks like a sheet of paper being pulled apart. Click that and it's going to ask you for an action name and you'll notice in the top left here it says new action. And new action means that you are recording a new action. So let's call this dogs as PNG. Okay, and as soon as you hit record, it's going to be recording what you're doing. So I'm going to hit record. I'm going to go file, save as, PNG, and I'm going to choose exactly where I want this guy to go. So we're going to go dogs PNG. You're going to hit save, interlaced. I like that better. It's, it's more important for, for larger files, but, and then we're going, when we're done, we're going to hit the stop button and all the actions have recorded. Now, the action is done, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to delete this PNG, and I'm going to I'm going to show you something really cool. So let's go to File, Automate Batch, and this tab is your lifesaver. So this is where you can choose what you want to do and where you want it to come from and where you want to put it. So because we just selected the dogs as PNG action, the most recently one is always set under your action. So this is going to be the source file. So this is the from, and then we're going to define the to. So we're taking our dogs, and let's just head over to our desktop, uh, desktop and YouTube tutorials, dogs, and we're going to apply this action to all of the files that are currently in our dogs folder. And if you recall, we'll just go and uh, check that folder out. There are four PSDs, one for each of the four dog breeds we created as cards already. Next, you're going to choose the destination or the to folder. And that's where the, the files that were transformed with your action are going to be saved to. So we're going to head back to desktop and we're going to go to tutorials, dogs as PNG, because we want to save these guys as a PNG. Next, it's extremely important to click this. If it's not clicked, click it. Override action, save as commands. What this does is it basically says when you're saving, whatever save function was used in your action is going to be prescribed and overwrite the default here. And, and now you should be good to go. So you're going to say OK. And stuff's going to start to happen. So you're going to see your data sets pop up on your screen. And then it's going to go blank. And now if you head back to the tutorials and you go to dogs as PNG, you're going to have all of your cards here automatically. And if I head over here, you can see these are all the cards that I currently have in my game. There are 106. Um, there are many more. However, at this point, this is all I have art for. Um, 
adjusting all of the, the variables and text on all of these cards, because there are a ton of different keywords, or um, I believe 12 or 13 different keywords in total. Some are red, some are blue, and, and like I said before, you know, some of these fields are blank, some of them are red, blue. This has been a, a lifesaver um, for me to be able to do this. So uh, let's see what else I can do that would uh, sort of help. Um, so we've talked about batching, uh, we've talked about uh, data merging from Excel, and we've talked about creating actions. And these are these are really uh, simple tools that you can use to do incredibly complex things. So basically the sky is the limit. If you wanna compile your images ad hoc, so basically just to find the layers and do fills for everything, you can you can do some really sophisticated stuff once you once you feel comfortable with the software. So, uh, I hope the video helped. I hope you guys enjoyed it and and learned something new. Um, if you have any questions about this, um, just like the video, subscribe, post your comments, uh, and I'll I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, this is the first video I've ever made on any of these subjects or, or ever actually. So if you have any uh, suggestions for how I could improve, that'd be awesome. Thanks and and good luck with all your future projects.